guys hello the ultimate guide for divinity original sin 2 i wanted to make something before i finish with divinity original sin 2 and this is one of the last videos i'll ever make for it i want to cover everything there is and share what i learned for my 500 hours with you so let's start with classes, or better to say with skills. How do I see it? You know, you have a lot of videos um, on YouTube like Frost Paladin, uh, Fire Battle Mage, Berserker, blah blah blah. Then you have their own builds, subclasses like Shadow Blade, Fighter, Knight similar things you know what the classes are none of that matters what matters is only this this and nothing else what I mean by it you got exactly three main physical classes three main magic classes and three utility classes crowd control classes movement classes you can't play like for example like a knight only or let's call it like a warfare only. you'll need a perfect mix let's start from physical you can go as a warfare character warfare character can be played as a dual wielding swords or axes or maces character you can play him as a two-handed melee weapon character, or you can play him with a sword and shield. That's warfare. That's strength-based warfare. Scales with strength. You can play him with fineness if you want to use spears, and then that's two-handed. That's all there is for warfare. So no classes, we call him warfare. Now. After Warfare, we have Scoundrel. Scoundrel... Scoundrel is a mobility, bursting class that's best with daggers, daggers in both hands, and you're good to go. And at the end, we have Huntsman. For physical bows and crossbows, he uses ranged, he uses high ground, he profits out of high ground, as you can see here. And that's all there is to know about them. Now we go to magic. Magic are geomancy. Let's call it a supportive magic. Main magic is hydrosophy, pyrokinetic, and then geomancy and eldritch. So, how do we play mages? You want fire mage, you start with pyrokinetic. You want. Uh, Ice Mage, you start with Hydrosophy. You want a mix between those two, you go with Aerotherge. Plus it offers a lot of utility. You want um, Earth Damage, Poison Damage, but it's kind of weak. Geomancy is more like a supportive magic skill. You let Geomancy on top of Aerotherge, Pyro, or Hydro. And the last three are so those supports that I was talking about. Summoner, Summoning, Polymorphy, and Necromancy. Why support? How do I see them? How you should play classes? And what you should do? Here, I added like 90% of the skills for you. Basically all the skills you need. Now, um, I'll start with the most powerful skills. They are not that good at all. They will come in handy for the last fight when you have unlimited source. I don't want to talk way too much about this. They were nerfed. None of these skills are good now. Arrow Storm was good in Classic Edition. In Definitive Edition, maybe the best 3-point source skill is Overpower. But it only works on Warfare character. Sword skills with two points 
in Source are way much better and more spammable than 3. So, what are the most important skills in the game? It's not, it's definitely not damage skills. You need action points and movement, buffs and debuffs. What do I mean by it? From Warfare, Phoenix Dive is great because you can move around the map. You need to move around the map. And this is the best skill in Warfare, Phoenix Dive. The next skill that's very good is First Aid. You can remove knockdown from your characters, you can cure them, you can cure cripple, blind, silence, as you can see here. Cure more, most of those ailments, debuffs. And what's most important out of those skills, they're cheap. Plus, they require very few points into their own... What do they call them here? Into their own... We call them skills. Into their own branch, let's call it. So, Phoenix Dive is one point. First Aid is one point. Tactical Retreat is one point, but it requires two points into Huntsman. Very good on every mage. Mages lack mobility. If you put two points into Huntsman, it doesn't matter if you play Aeromage, Hydromage, Pyromage, Geomage, a mix of all of those combined with Necro. Everything works, but what doesn't work is your mobility. If you take Huntsman on every mage, every squishy character, you'll have mobility, you'll apply haste on you, so you'll have more action points, plus it costs only one action point to cast, you can position well, you can get the high ground, you get bonus from Huntsman when shooting enemies with skills or basic attacks from high ground. Tactical Retreat is one of the best skills in the game, without doubt. Next skills that are useful from Scoundrel that only require one point into Scoundrel and you should have this on every class you play, absolutely on every class you play, is Adrenaline. It gives you two action points, it doesn't cast the cast, and it gives you two action points immediately. So if you go with a four-man party instead of four starting action points, use Adrenaline, you have six. Which maybe means that you can burst your main targets, your main enemies, main opponents, very quickly. Now imagine if you have Adrenaline on all four of your characters. On all four of them. So, instead of 16 action points, we'll have 24 action points in the first round. Now, that's a fucking lot. And you should have Adrenaline on every single class. Doesn't matter what you want to play, Adrenaline is a must. After Adrenaline, this little thing, Chloroform, is absolutely insane on every class. Especially if you have more magic damage in your team, in your party. You put enemies to sleep for one point. You can put most of the enemies in the game to sleep. You can't put uh, possessed enemies only to sleep. But everyone else can sleep. Main boss can sleep. Most of the bosses can sleep. Only those dwarves, possessed dwarves, can sleep and you get like two or three of those encounters in the entire game. Chloroform is cheap, far range, excellent for crowd control. These two from Scoundrel are a must on every character. I'll explain later what do you take for what class, of course. Next skills that you need from Pyromancy are Haste and Peace of Mind. Haste, you'll remove Slow and Cripple, and you'll have one more action point for the next round. Absolutely insane for only one action point. Peace of Mind, you get Wits. With Wits, you get Critical Chance. When you score a crit, you hurt more. You'll raise Strength, Finesse, Intelligence. So, it doesn't matter if you deal damage with strength based weapons, finesse based weapons, or intelligence based weapons, or strength based skills, finesse based skills, 
intelligence based skills you will hurt more plus it removes blinded terrified charm taunted sleeping enraged and mad all of those are good but the worst are terrify and charm you need to remove terrify and charm and you will have problems with some of the enemies with terrify and charm my advice have fucking haste peace of mind on every character that's the most useful from pyro we go to hydro hydro is full of utility and very very good and cheap spells skills whatever now um the first one is armor of frost you get it very early on you recover magic armor tons of magic armor it scales well it cures burning poison stun frozen suffocating you're petrified it's an absolute must if you go with four man party you need it like on two or three characters to stay good, stay healthy and stay safe. That's the first one. The next one is rain, of course. Not much to say about rain. Quench fire with it. You can apply a lot of different debuffs, buffs, a lot of spells are combined well with rain. Rain is a must. Suiting cold absolutely great it's only one point and it recovers magic armor for all of your allies around you one action point have that in mind cryogenic stasis absolutely great it comes later on you need to put two points into hydrosophy for that you are in cryogenic stasis you are in vulnerable for the whole round after the round ends you will receive you'll recover hp is very important as you can see here immune to all damage and heal over time plus it removes shackles of pain and some of those tougher enemies have shackles of pain next one global cooling from hydrosophy again one action point what else to say huge area of effect solid damage if you cast rain Enemies are out of magic armor, you can freeze them with global cooling. Requires only two points into Hydrosophy. That's it from Hydrosophy. Aerotherge, Tornado, great to clear. Dead Fog, Necrofire, basically every, every status that's actually bad. On the ground, on your characters, doesn't matter. Tornado, great spell, although. It's a bit costly, it requires 3 points into Aeroturge, but it's very good also. Evasion sounds good, but if you position well, you don't need it, even though it's one action point. Vaporize, it removes, removes Petrified and Frozen from their character, also a very good skill to have. The next in line, although Favorable Wind sounds good, again, it's bullshit, why? Because I just gave you movements here with Phoenix Dive, with Tactical Retreat, even Rogues, if you want to go with Scoundrels, excuse me. If you want to go with Mobility, Cloak and Dagger is a must. That's a very useful skill. I didn't add it here because it only counts for the character that wears daggers. Um, where were we? Aeroturge. Teleportation. If you ask me what's the most important skill in the game, it's teleportation. It's better than adrenaline. Teleportation is OP. It's the best skill in game. If you have TP on all of your characters, it's not a mistake. You need to put two points into editor on all of your characters. And imagine this now. If you suffer on Tactician, for example, you have Tactical Retreat, you have Cloak and Dagger, you have Phoenix Dive, so you can position. After positioning, you position your enemies with teleportation as well. You tip it them far away. Or you tip it them close by to burst them. It doesn't matter. Plus, TP deals damage, physical damage, but it's still damage. TP is the best spell in game. Next in line on TP is Nether Swap. You exchange places with a dead enemy or a live enemy. 
between your characters still an absolute must. We go to Geomancy. Fortify, great to have. It clears burning, poison, you can't get teleported, and it recovers your physical armor. What more do you want? It's a must. It's one action point only. Man metal, very good. You recover armor for your entire party. I like one skill very much, and I'll tell you what. Worm Tremor, because it entangles enemies. When you combine Worm Tremor, now Worm Tremor is OP. It wasn't in Classic Edition. In Definitive Edition, Worm Tremor is in top 10 skills in the game. Why? Here, in Talents, you can acquire a talent that's Torturer. Torturer breaks through enemies' magic armor. It doesn't matter if they got 1,000, 2, 3, 10,000 magic armor. You will entangle them with Worm Tremor, as you can see here. Bottom left, entangled. Not only for entangle, you can apply burning poison acid, suffocate. Even the Rapture Tendons from Rogue. But the most important for me here, and the game changer that made this game even easier than it was in the Classic Edition. I don't know why they did that, but they did it. Is a new Torturer. And a new Entangle. Worm Tremor. You just entangle in a huge area of effect. There is nothing else to say about it. It's a must. At least on one of your characters. You'll have huge control over your enemies, especially over melee enemies. They want to get close, you know? Next. Bless, of course, you get it early on. Let's call it a must, although it is a source point. We're done with Geomancy. Next, we can go to ne Necromancy. Eh? As I said before, Necromancy is a support skill tree that pairs together well with magic and with physical skills. Now, if you want to pair Necromancy with physical, you'll need Bone Cage, like here, you will need Bloodsucker, it's also good on Mages, Bloodsucker. Um, Death Wish is very good on both. Again, Mages scale well with Mosquito Swarm, and in fact, you can deal physical damage that scales with intelligence with your mages. For example, you encountered like, I don't know, two, three enemies that have more than 5,000 armor and they're resistant to fire, poison and earth. And you play as a pyro geo mage. You can't deal damage, you deal zero damage. But if you have mosquito swarm and in fact You'll break through them. Because it scales with intelligence. Later with that. We go with most important skills. I'll go in order here. Bullhorn is good on tank for retribution. It's not a must. Plus, it provides some mobility. Chameleon Cloak. Top 10 spells in the game. Invisibility is OP. You'll get 3 rounds, 3 turns. Because enemies can't see you. Can reposition, it's cheap, nothing else to say about it, it's a must, probably on every character. Chicken, probably the best skill in Polymorph. What else I can say? You break through enemies' physical armor, turn them into chicken, less for two rounds, and you kick the chicken out. Kill the chicken. Control Void Walker, not that one. We go with Dominate Mind from Summoning. Great skill. It's fucking huge with three action points, you know. But then again, you charm an enemy, you know, for two turns. Someone fights on your side. It's useful if you're able to burst through their magic armor and apply Dominate Mind. Then it's very useful. We go further.
Medusa's head. Let's say it like this. Very few people even realize how Medusa's head works. I think it's in the top 5 skills in the game. Why? Guess Medusa's head. You petrify enemies around you. That are without magic armor. Now imagine if you go with mages and you're able to burst through their magic armor. You can petrify them all. They won't play as long as Medusa's head lasts. And it lasts for two or three turns. They will get petrified when you stand near them. They're insta-petrified without magic armor when you have Medusa's head. Now, if you can't reach them, and you can always reach them like cast Medusa's head like this. And let's say enemy is over here. You just jump to them. Bam, they're petrified. If they don't have magic armor. Now, if you can't reach them even with that, you can cast Petrifying Visage. Like, if you disappear, well, there again, you'll see the range for Petrifying Visage. Uh, in other words, you can petrify enemies for three, two, three turns. They won't be able to play. In two, three turns, you'll finish the fight. It doesn't matter if it's a boss fight. Whatever it is, Medusa's head is OP, and most of the people do not realize that here is Petrifying Visage, look at the fucking range, Petrify everything in that range. Absolutely everything. Top 5 kills in the game. One of them is Medusa's head and Petrifying Visage. Now, it's one of my favorites at least. The next one, I would say Raining Blood, but it's not, <laughs> although I like the spell a lot. Uh, Shackles of Pain was great in Divinity Original Sin 1. In Divinity Original Sin 2, you can easily skip Shackles of Pain, even though it's cheap. Physical armor ruined it in Divinity Original Sin 2. In Classic and in Definitive Edition, it remains shit, unfortunately. The next good thing is Spider Legs functions similarly to Medusa's head, you cast spider legs and then M web appears. When you web your enemies they stay grounded, uh, similar to Entangle, but I like Entangle more in a combination with a sorcerer. Spread your wings, one more mobility skill, it's cheap and you can reposition with spread your wings. You cast spread your wings, Get wings, fly away to the high ground, and you deal more damage. And the last one is Tentacle Lash. Tentacle Lash is OP on a strength based character because Tentacle Lash scales with strength. And it applies atrophy. What more do you want? It scales like crazy, it applies atrophy. It's got solid range. One of the best skills in game. Now, if I have to pick top five, we're not done yet, though. We have one more skill here. It's sword skill. Uh, that's very useful, and that would be skin graft. Skin graft is fucking OP, and I'll explain why. I realized that on my first playthrough a year ago, but Larian didn't realize this. But whatever, especially on Lone Wolf, like. Let's call it like this. You play with Sibyl, for example. It doesn't matter. This Flesh Sacrifice on Elves gives one action point. Come here. It gives one action point. Instead of four starting, you'll get five. Then you reallocate with Cloak and Dagger. You get four. Then you cast Adrenaline. You get six. And you hit for five. Then you go... Excuse me. For four. Then you go with Skin Graft. Skin graph refreshes your cooldowns on all of your skills. What it means? It means you can cast Flash Sacrifice for action points and Adrenaline for action points again. So instead of 4 action points for man party, you will get 10 action points with Skin graph. That goes for every fucking character you play. You have Adrenaline and Skin graph. 
you will have a lot of action points. It's like playing a lone wolf. Now imagine how easy lone wolf is if you know what you're doing. You can have 20 action points on lone wolf easily and you can burst enemies. Well, even before they play. That's why I stopped playing lone wolf playthrough. Because it was way too easy. Tactician was bullshit. Way, way too fucking easy. Skin graft is OP. That's all there is about it. So this are the most important skills in the game. There is nothing else around them. Top 5. Adrenaline. Tactical retreat because it applies haste and repositions you. Sooting cold. TP. Skin graft. And let's call it top 6 and Medusa's head. I can't skip Medusa's head, it's just way too good. All in all, you should try to have all of these skills on your characters. Not on all of them, of course. When you go with Warfare, you have Phoenix Dive. When you go with Mages for movement, you'll use Tactical Retreat. When you go with Scoundrel, you use Cloak and Dagger, this one. You gotta have movement. When you go with Scoundrel, as I went with Seville, for example, I had both Phoenix Dive and Cloak and Dagger for mobility. And on top of that, I had this for mobility. And on top of that, I had Spread Your Wings and Invisibility. Five skills that gives you mobility, repositioning. Most important skill in the game, most important move in the game is repositioning. And then the game from hard becomes easy when you know how to position. Now, we'll go to basics, talents, what they changed, what's good, what's not. Executioner, we're gonna come back to skills later, but first to finish with smaller things, we'll start with talents. Executioner, it requires only one point into warfare. After you deal a killing blow, you get two extra action points. I already said movement and action points are the most important things in this game. Executioner gives you free action points, yeah? Which means Executioner is a must on every character. It's just way too good to skip. Now, if uh, you can pick between Pawn or Executioner. Pawn gives you fr free movement, yeah. One action point of free movement, it requires one point in the Scoundrel. Executioner gives you two extra action points after a killing blow, incompatible with the pawn. Why would you want pawn? What did I said? You got Phoenix Dive, one action points to move, reposition where you want. You got Tactical Retreat, you got Cloak and Dagger, you have your Adrenaline, you'll have TP, you'll have Nether Swap, you'll have Spread Your Wings, you'll have Bullhorns, you'll have every fucking thing available for and you go here into talents and you want to take the pawn pawn ignore it forget about it it doesn't exist do not waste talent points that are very rare into pawn go for executioner it's the best talent in the game after executioner it's torturer i explain why mages you can burn enemies through magical armor you can poison them you can entangle them which i think that's the most op thing in the game that entangle is fucking crazy they should remove that you can apply rapture tendons you can apply suffocate torturer after executioner pure perfection after that it's hot head it gives critical chance the more critical chance you have on your mages Hot head, of course, combined with Savage Sortilage. The more you'll crit, the more your skills will crit, the more damage you'll deal. So, Savage Sortilage and Hot Head goes very well together. Combine that with Executioner and Torturer on your mages. I repeat, doesn't matter what kind of mages you're playing, they'll be great. Water Rush, one of the better talents in a game. Why? Very simple. When you drop below 50% of your HP, it'll give you one extra action point. So instead of like turn 3, let's say, you're at lower than half, instead of 4 action points, you'll get 5. 
Imagine if your character has haste. Then it's six. Imagine if you have adrenaline. Then it's eight. Imagine if you apply skin graft. And you cast adrenaline again. You see what I talk about? Is it 10 action points? Even on turn 3 or 4, it makes the game easier. Now, the next in line, of course, you should start the game on your main character. It's a bit annoying, but when you pick a main character, it doesn't matter if it's Fain, Sibyl, Lass, whatever you pick, custom made character, you should start with Pet Pal. You'll be able to speak to animals. It's more fun, there are a lot of animals, you can acquire some skills, complete some quests, you get free XP. Just go with fucking Pet Pal. Do not forget about it when you create your character. The rest of these talents, useless talents, like Demon, or Ice King, or Lich, or Living Armor, or... I don't know. Slingshot, God forbid. Grenades, 5 meter extra range for grenades that are completely useless. Just ignore them. You have most important skills here. Here. So you can check it out. What I got here and here pause it when you want and check out what I got on all of my characters those are good talents the rest of the talents they're just there like to exist spread the list call it whatever you like they're bullshit if you have problems with game and if you're not that good you can always go with comeback kid combined with the morning person so you can revive when you cast resurrection you revive with full health instead of like 20% health when you die you'll get insta resurrected because of a comeback here we're done with telling civil abilities for your characters it doesn't matter what you play your main character should always go with persuasion most of the conversations that you'll have will be with your main character and you can get quite a lot with a persuasion skill so you max persuasion on your main character always one of your characters should have persuasion one of your characters should always have bartering or lucky charm you pick what you like i like bartering better it's not wrong if you like lucky charm better but you pick between those two one of your characters should have lore master one of your characters should have Divity. So, once again, main character, Persuasion. Second character, Lore Master. Third character, Bartering or Lucky Charm. Fourth character, Divity. We're done with civil abilities. Did not invest a single fucking point into sneaking. They should erase sneaking from the game. It's useless. Combat abilities. A bit more complicated, but let's see. Defense. It's not that good. Better to invest into your skills than into defense. Better to invest into weapons than into your defense. You should always combine skills with combat abilities. For example, Sibyl, dual wielding daggers. She's got dual wielding and scoundrel and a bit of points everything else so you have more options available I already said what the options are movement buffs debuffs most important thing action points mages do not require a single point into weapons into combat abilities you don't spend a single fucking point into weapons everything you go for are their skills if you play with pyro you can play with pyro Geo, Necro. It combines very well. You shouldn't play anything else. If you go with Hydro, you go with Hydro, Aero, Necro, and nothing else. Those skills, spells, call them however you like, just merge together well. And they're 
great. In that order, by the way. Now, when you go with melee character, if you go with ranged character, bows and crossbows, you should invest into range and into handsome. As the main combat abilities. When you go as a melee character, sword and shield, you shouldn't put a single fucking point here. All of your points should go into skills. Warfare, support skills. Polymorphy, warfare, a bit of scoundrel, a bit of geomancy, or armor. When you go with warfare, two handed, you should invest into two handed. It give you it's gonna give you more crit multiplier and more damage. So you max out two handed and warfare for huge weapons into melee. That's basically it. Uh, mages. Mages. You got two options with your mages. You can go with wands or you can go with staffs. What's the difference? I believe wands are better. Why? Two wands are two different stats, you know, plus two to intelligence, plus two to intelligence, then something else on top of all of that, and then the most important thing down there is a crit chance. The more crit chance you got, the more you'll hurt. So it's better to have two wands with crit chance than one staff with crit chance on your mages. Of course, that will all apply if you have Savage Sword Tillage. Do not forget to take Savage Sword Tillage. At the end, we have attributes. There is nothing much to say about attributes. Strength for strength based characters, strength based skills, strength based weapons. Read what it says here. Damage based on basic attack receives a bonus from intelligence. The other one receives bonus from shield. The other one receives bonus from intelligence. Now, when you pick a strength character, it's gonna scale with strength. Bonus with strength. Bonus with strength. So you decide what you want to. I gave you the best skills here, utility skills that you need, that are a must, that are great. All of those other skills do not matter that much. We'll pass through all other skills too at the end, but these are the skills you want to use. We were at attributes. This is the most important stat in attributes that you need to pay attention to. It's crit chance. I don't want to repeat what crit chance is, just pay attention, raise it high, you won't have any problems. Initiative, for some reason, doesn't work in the game. It worked in Divinity Original Sin 1. It doesn't work in the classic edition of Divinity Original Sin 2. It doesn't work in Definitive Edition. I'm sorry, but it doesn't work. It's bullshit. Just pay attention on Critical Chance. Max out your main stat for mages, its intelligence and memory. For Warfare, it's Strength and Memory and Constitution. For Huntsmen, Bows, Crossbows, it's Finesse, Wits, Wits, because they give Crit Chance. For Scoundrel, you need to have Low Wits, High Finesse, a bit of Memory, a bit of Constitution. That's about it. Those are all the classes, believe it or not, although it sounds like there are a lot of tons of classes, I already said, forget about it, these are the classes here, how you want to call them, if you want to call them Fart Paladins, or whatever you like to call them, it's your choice, but these are the classes, when someone asks me, what do you play, what's your team build, I say, Pyrogeo Necro, I don't say a wizard, because it's Pyrogeo Necro. You maybe start as a wizard with Pyro and Geo, but then later on you let TP, you let Tactical Retreat from Huntsman, so what are you? A wizard? You let Adrenaline from Scoundrel, so your main stat is Pyro, and you put most of the points into Pyro, and you deal most of your damage with Fire, Fire-based skills, Fireballs, Flaming Whips, similar things, you know. So most of your points are into Fire, then into Geo, then two points into Scoundrel for Tactical Retreat, so you can move around the map, then a point into Scoundrel for Adrenaline, then 
let's see. Then like two points into Arrow for TP. You get what I'm saying? Then a few points into Necro to recover HP when you hit with skills, spells, break through physical armor maybe with your mage if you can't break with magic damage damage dealing spells. That's all important. So how do you decide what you want to do? What you want to play? It's quite simple. You can go with full physical team, full magic de damage dealing team, or you can go with the max. Perfect way is the max. Why? It's most fun. All the options are there. Absolutely all the options are there. You can carry most of items, gear, weapons, armors, everything. Absolutely everything you find. You know, when you go with full physical, they'll always fight about something, you know? Like, you find a very good armor and you can drop it to only one. What will the rest of them do? Here, when you have intellect, finesse, strength based, you'll... You always have your team equipped in full. And as I said, it's most fun. Hey. Now, let's say you wanna play Warfare character with Sword and Board. This is what you need here. What you see here. This is how it should look like. Of course, you can always add invisibility if you're not sure that you can do it. Like for example, Spartan Swings invisibility. Yeah. This is how your warfare character should look like. This is not needed anymore. Apotheosis is shit. Do not waste points into it. I tested it. It's bullshit. Maybe get Mesoily Carapace instead. And let's say. An oily blob. There. These are the skills you need on sword and board. When you go with two-handed melee weapon, you only exclude bouncing shield, deflection, and similar skills that have shield stats in it. That's all for warfare based character. When you go with scoundrel. These are all the skills you need. As I said, Mortal Blow, it's not that good. I'd rather go for Dagger's Drone, even though it sounds weaker. It's not. It deals tons of damage. These all skills here are nerfed. Although they maybe sound cool, but they're nerfed. I showed like 90% of the skills here. You can also craft. I think there are 10 more skills remaining to craft. But they're not good at all. They're bullshit, to be honest. These are the best skills for your scoundrel, daggers, backstabbing, thief. If you want to go with Hydro Mage or Arrow Mage or Hydro Arrow Necro, as I like to call it, this is what you need. These skills here. If you want to go. As Pyro, or let's say Pyro Geo Necro, hey. Eh? So we apply everything from Pyro. Let's do that one too. What's best? This fucking thing is OP, by the way. Flaming Crescendo. You should always have Flaming Crescendo. It costs three points in the Pyrokinetic, but it's it's pure perfection. As I said, adrenaline, tactical. It's always nice, and it's always nice. You, uh, I said you need executioner on your mages when you kill two ex extra action points. I imagine if you reduce enemies' physical armor with someone, and you just can't breach with fire or poison or geo, you could have battle stamp and tentacle lash or a chicken, or maybe both chicken. Now your mage covers crowd control. You see? You can knock them down, you can turn them into a chicken, you can put atrophy on them. You don't need 
magic damage only. You can also do it like this. It doesn't matter, they don't deal damage, it's very low damage, but they will apply knockdown, they will apply atrophy, you will apply polymorph into chicken with your mage. What did I say? Parogeo Necro Mage. We took everything that's good from Pyro. Maybe Corpse Explosion or Mass Corpse Explosion, but I would play it like this. You won't have this much slots at the start, of course. Reactive armor in Geomancy. As I said, Geomancy is a utility magic. You can use it on warfare, you can use on your mages. We use on your mages, you go with damage, with earthquake, with poison dart, with fossil strike, the slow, you know. And when you go with warfare, it has huge physical armor, then for example fortify and reactive armor are a great combo. So you don't need reactive armor on your mage, you need this. Tangle of course is most OP skill in the game. And at the end, we have Necro. And we need Mosquitoes. In fact, again, it's physical damage, spells, skills that scale with intelligence. If you can't bridge with fire or earth or poison, you will fucking bridge with Mosquito Swarm and infect. And then again, you'll kill enemies that way. I had to take one, I would take Pyroclastic Eruption. Skin grabbed because of adrenaline. A bit of earth damage. A bit of poison damage. So what I covered with this, now we need fire. Bam. With source skills, we have earth. Skin graft resets, earth, physical, poison, fire. Four, five different things. Where is grasp of the starved, more physical. Now you cover everything with source spells with pyrogeonic. Each type of damage: poison, earth, physical, fire. Everything is here. Plus crowd control, knockdown. Chicken, Polymorph, Buffs, Haste, Peace of Mind, Movement, Tactical Retreat, Action Points, Adrenaline. And this is how you play Wizard, so-called Wizard, I call him Pyrogeonek. Now, can you play Pyroeronek? Yeah. But then, instead of some skills into... Geomancy, you want to take TP, Nether Swap, you want to take Utility that I showed you at the start of this video. Utility from Arrow. You always need Utility, you always need Stuns, you always need Crowd Control, and you always need Alternatives. If you can't deal damage with Arrow, or let's say with Arrow and, I don't know, Geo, maybe you can deal damage with Hydra. You know? And then what do you like? You like crowd control. That's why we put something from physical for crowd control here. The more options you have, the easier the game is. You want to complicate things, go with pyro only. You'll end up with some enemies that heal from fire and what will you do? You'll be useless. You can throw bombs on them maybe. Not all of the bombs. Some Ice grenades or tremor grenades, but they deal zero damage because bombs are crap in the Unity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition. What we lack now, I covered uh, Warfare, I covered Scoundrel, I covered Wizard, I covered Aero, Hydro, I haven't covered Summoning. I said it's supportive for me, it's fucking boring. I had one playthrough with a Summoner, 
it's very boring. Best skill in summoner is definitely dominate mind. How summoner works, you conjure incarnate and then you buff your incarnate. How it works with uh, combining skills. You take one skill from summoning, one skill book. Uh, summoning is counted as a physical and then you mix your skill book from Let's see if we can do it immediately. You mix like Farsight Infusion combined with... With let's say... Uh, with Pyro. Sitting there. And now your Incarnate will receive... Where is Fire Infusion skill book? You... Yeah, oh, where's the book? You will apply. Motherfucker. Last picked up. You will apply fire damage on your incarnate. But I can't buy the book because there's way too many things here. Is it on Fane? Plus. I think it's on Fane. There. Fire Infusion. You learn Fire Infusion. And it appeared here. It requires Pyrokinetic 1 and Summoning 1. When you combine Summoning Skill Book with uh, Source Fire Skill Book, one of the Source Skills, then you'll get, instead of Burning Fire Infused Minion, you'll get Necro Fire Infused Minion. Same goes with Hydro. Summoning with Hydro you'll get Ice Minion, and so on. You combine Physical with Magic Books, and this is how it works. Physical skills in the game are Warfare, Summoning, Scoundrel, Polymorph, Necromancy, and Huntsman. Magic skills in the game are Aero, Geo, Hydro, Pyro. That's how you combine skills. You can combine magic with magic or physical with physical, you won't get anything out of it. We're at summoner. What do you do? You cast minions, some crowd control, and of course, um, dominate. Charm. I don't like it, it's boring. If you wanna play it, if you like to summon stuff, it's not bad. You can summon Fire Slug if you combine Summon with Pyromancy. You can summon uh, that Spider if you combine uh, Summoner with Necromancy. You can summon Totems, Bone Totems when combined with Necromancy. You'll get Featherfall Condor. You'll get Cat. You'll get, I don't know, 10 million different summons. It's your choice what you want to do. Most of the summons are his summons, summoner summons, and it's incarnates, and then it's totems. What you can combine with a summoner, for me, the best thing when you're a summoner, the best thing is a combination of summoner and a, a tank. So it's going to be a strength based summoner. Why? You'll equip very good gear, you'll have a lot of physical armor, you'll have a lot of magic armor, you'll have a lot of HP. The longer you stay alive, the more damage your summons will deal. And you want to stay alive as long as possible. possible. And you want movement on your summoner too. Maybe you can go with Phoenix Dive, maybe you can go with both Phoenix Dive and Technical Retreat. But this is how you play summoner. Now, the last thing that's remaining, Polymorph, as I said, that's not a class. They call him Metamorph in this game when you decide to start with Polymorph only. That's not a class. Polymorph is a support skill tree. Every class should have some of those Polymorph skills into them. And at least two points into Polymorph. You should learn Polymorph skills on every character you play. But you can't play as a Metamorph polybase character by itself. Huntsman remains. Huntsman is the most simple thing in the game. You just take everything from this, all of this that's green. And you can take Adrenaline from Scoundrel. 
and you can take haste and peace of mind from Pyro. You only need one point into Pyro and one point into Scoundrel. Those would be three levels, eh? So three levels, and after that you max all of this shit out. I would suggest you put some points into Warfare for bettering Ram and Battle Stump for your Huntsman. Why? When someone gets close, you burst the shit out of them. And then you can go with Battle Stump, knock them down, Battering Ram, knock them down, Tentacle Lash, apply Atrophy, Polymorph Chicken, of course, turn them into a chicken, you will deal physical damage as a Huntsman. So all of these skills from Poly, from Warfare, it doesn't matter if you are ranged with bows and crossbows, you will put most of your points into ranged and Huntsman. But put two points into Poly, two points into Scoundrel, two points into Warfare, Add some of that crowd control. And all will be fine. The game is very simple. People just tend to complicate things a lot. As I said, Fart Paladins, Cryo, Knights. And I don't know. I've seen like 10 million different builds for Divinity. I mean, never videos. I've seen names of those videos. They're just clickbaits. Fuck that. All you need to know is this, and then you can play however you like. Most important things again, action points, action point skills, skills that provide action points, executioner from talents, crit chances, movement, crowd control, and at the end, damage. You will get your damage. You don't have to worry about damage. Worry about Disabling your enemies. You have pet pal, you have persuasion on your main character, and you're good to go. Tags, they change nothing, they're just there as a cosmetics. You will have some options in conversations with tags like Champion of Driftwood or. Friend of Dwarves, Friend of Elves, blah blah blah, Champion of the Arena. In Fort Joy or whatever, but they're not important at all. They're just there for cosmetics. I hope that I was of some help to you. I wanted to make this ultimate guide and simplify things because I don't want to complicate. <laughs> Uh, it's just after 500 hours what I realized is there are like 10 skills in the game I showed them at the beginning of the video they're just way too good to skip you should have them on all of your characters 4 TPs you just do whatever you like it's not interesting to me I usually have 1, 2 teleports and that's about it because I want to make the game a bit harder if you want a game easier if you want to burst through everyone have fun, have crowd control, and don't worry about encounters, just go with it. Tactical Retreat, Phoenix Dive, Adrenaline, Haste, TP, Nether Swap. You can reposition, you can do whatever the fuck you like. Do not forget about invisibility, because enemies are a bit stupid when you're invisible, they won't search you with AoE spell skills, you know, and you can easily refill your action points in like invisibility last two turns. You're on zero, after adrenaline you have two, you apply invisibility, wait with all of them, one turn, enemies will skip their turns, and you come back with six action points on the next turn. Very extremely useful in fights. I covered all the classes, we covered talents, we covered abilities. I want to check talents once more and see if there is anything good, but I doubt I already double checked. Mnemonic is very good if you want more slots for your skills. No, this is it. What I showed you here on these four are the talents that are best, absolutely the best in the game. Every everything else sucks from talents. That's it guys. This is the last guide I'll make for divinity. 
there were no cut edits in this video I did it like I do my streams just talking with you and explaining everything you need to know about the game if you have questions feel free to ask I always reply thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you on the next one